Good day, students. Welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over the definition of what um, fields are. Uh, we're looking at the mathematical definition of fields um, in abstract algebra. So what um, is a field? We're going to be taking a look at two definitions, technically three. Um, the first two are based on um, the assumption that you know what the definition of rings are. If you want to know what um, the definition of a ring um, is, feel free to go to our website, our YouTube page, and you can gain access to the definition of what rings are. Okay, so I'm going to base um, my first two definitions on the assumption that you know what rings are. Okay, so let's take a look at the definition. The first one is the ring based definition. There are two ways that you can define fields using rings. You can define a field, let's call it F, okay? A field F is a non zero commutative ring where all its non zero elements have a multiplicative inverse. All right? Another way you can define it is you can think about it as. Um, a ring whose non-zero elements form an abelian group, all right? Abelian is another word for commutative, okay? So if the non-zero elements of a ring form an abelian group, then that um, ring is a field, okay? Now, um, let's take a look at the definition of field without the assumption that you know what rings are, okay? I'll just note that in this definition of fields, within it is the definition of rings, okay? Um, if you add on commutativity and the multiplicative inverse to the non-zero elements to um, rings, then you end up with fields, okay? Now, let's take a look at the standalone definition, that's what I want to call it, without any reference to rings. So assuming you do not know what rings are, uh, let's take a look at the definition of what a field is. All right, so a field, let's call it F, is a set with two binary operations, namely addition and multiplication. Those are the operations that apply to rings also. And this can be denoted as F, which is the name of the field. We just want to call it F. And these are the two operations that are applicable um, to fields, addition and multiplication, just like rings, where the following properties hold. The first um, property is closure. Closure under addition and multiplication. So, Addition and multiplication are closed. That is, if you take two elements from um, the, a set that is a ring, um, the product and the sum of the elements of that set will be elements of that set. Okay? So that's what closure means. If you add or uh, multiply elements of that set, your result will be an element of the set that your add-ins or um, multiplicands originated from. So as illustrated here, so let's say um, you have A and B, two elements in a set, F. If F is a ring, then the sum and the product of those two, any two elements, will be elements of that set, F. Okay, so that's condition number one that must be met in order um, for the set F to be a field. Condition number two is associativity. The associative property applies to both addition and multiplication. And that's um, the same uh, with uh, rings also, okay? So addition and multiplication are associative. You can see that illustrated here for all elements. Let's see three ABC in a set F. 
If F is a field, then the associative property holds for both addition and multiplication. All right, the next axiom that makes a set to qualify to be a field is the commutative property. Okay, so this is one thing that distinguishes fields from rings. A ring does not always have to be commutative. Okay, if you add commutativity to a ring along with the non-zero uh, multiplicative inverse for every um, the multiplicative inverse for every non-zero element, you end up with a field. Okay, so you notice this is one uh, distinguishing factor here. Commutativity applies to both addition and multiplication. That's not the case with rings. Rings um, could be non-commutative where only um, addition is commutative. Um, like matrices, for example, could be a ring, but it's not a field. Okay? So um, what does this mean? It just means that for elements of a field, addition and multiplication commute. It doesn't matter the order. The order of the sum or product does not impact the results. The next property or axiom that qualifies a set to be a field is the additive, the existence of the additive and multiplicative identity elements. All right? For rings, you do not necessarily have to have a multiplicative identity element. Just having an additive identity element for rings is, su is sufficient. But for fields, you must have multiplicative and identity elements. Okay, so um, what are the multiplicative and identity elements for fields? <clears throat> um, they are 0 and 1. 0 is the additive identity and 1 is the multiplicative identity. Okay, so it's illustrated here for all A in F if F is a field, then um, you see the additive identity here. You add zero to the element, or you add the element to zero, you end up with that element. This illustrates the um, additive identity. And then we can see the multiplicative identity situation being illustrated here. When you multiply an element with the multiplicative identity, um, which is one in, in the field, um, you end up with the same number you started with. Okay? All right. Uh, now the next uh, property that um, qualifies a set to be a field is the existence of additive and multiplicative inverse elements. So for... Um, so let's say for set F, if set F is a field, then it has um, an additive and a multiplicative inverse elements. Okay? So you want to note that the um, multiplicative inverse is for non-zero elements of uh, F. Okay? Um, because if you want to find the inverse of zero, you run into complications. So for non-zero elements, we have a multiplicative inverse. Negative A represents the additive inverse, and the reciprocal of A, 1 over A, or A to the negative 1, represents the multiplicative inverse element. Okay? Um, and then you can see the um, operations in action here, when you add the, an element with its additive identity in any order, you end up with the identity element, okay? And when you multiply an element with its multiplicative inverse in any order, you end up with the multiplicative identity, which is 1. All right, so this condition must be met in order for a set to be a field. 
Lastly, this is very similar to rings. Is the distributivity? Sorry, is the is distributivity? Okay, you can distribute multiplication over addition. Okay, this is very very basic. Um, it's illustrated here for any three elements in in a set F, which is a field. Um, a times the sum of B plus C is equal to A times B plus A times C. So we see the distribution of A over B and C, okay? So uh, the distributivity of multiplication over addition must hold in order for a set to be a field, okay? All right, so can you think of examples of sets in the basic number system um, that qualifies as a field. Can you think of one? So an example of a uh, set that is a field is the set of rationals Q. All right, you can think about how um, all the set of rationals can um, satisfy all these uh, properties here for a field. Now, can you think of an example of a set in the basic number system, set of numbers that um, does not qualify as a field? Can you think of an example? An example is the set of integers Z. Okay, the set of integers Z. Now, if you take a look at these six axioms that we have here, can you think of um, which of these um, the set of integers violates? Which of these properties do not apply to the set of integers? Um, the one that comes to my mind uh, is the multiplicative inverse element. Okay, so if we pick an integer, let's say 2, the multiplicative inverse of 2 is 1 half but is one half in the set of integers? The answer is no, one half is in the set of rationals. <clears throat> so since um, no integer basically has a um, other than one um, and negative one, there, there exists at least um, an integer where its multiplicative inverse is not in the set of integers. So just only one um, counterexample shows that um, the set of integers is not a field. Okay, so um, there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool math tutorials such as this. If you have any questions or comments um, about this tutorial, feel free to include it in the comment section below this video. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.